break. Hurry, Mr. Bergeron's on. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. The process first is, I, I would recommend to her, is getting in touch with a uh, reverse mortgage counseling agency. And you have to do that. Right? And you have to do that. It's a requirement by both the Commonwealth and the federal government. So uh, on mass.gov, the, the state's website, yeah. you can do a search for approved reverse mortgage counseling agencies. You get in touch with one of those nonprofit agencies, you schedule an appointment. She would go through one of those face-to-face -face appointments where the counselor spends an hour or two explaining how the program works and then issues her a certificate. She then takes that certificate and shops around for a lender. Mm -hmm. Does some consultations with one or more lender. When she mm -hmm. decides the lender she wants to do business with, she fills out an application with that lender and hands over that counseling certificate. Now the lender with the application and the counseling certificate does all their behind the scenes things. Orders the appraisal, orders the title exam, all of the other things involved with that. That process, depending on the lender, can take anywhere from 30 to 90 days. So questions you should be asking your lender is, how long does it take you to do this loan? Yeah. As well as what does it cost you? Um, how much experience do you have? I understand. Now, in terms and, and, of- And by the way, you just, you just, you just mentioned um, something, that the process takes about mm, 30 to 90 days mm -hmm. and you figure out an appraisal. So. Yep. The, um, the, the, the assessed value of their house, their tax bill, they may come into account, but you always do an appraisal of the property. Absolutely. And the amount you lend is based on your appraisal. That's right. Okay. For the purpose of consultation, any yeah. lender is going to see what's out there in the public domain, domain real estate tax assessment, Zillow.com, Realtor.com, right. that yeah. kind of thing, homeowner's opinion. That's just for the preliminary numbers. Mm -hmm. The real numbers are based on the appraisal. I get it. Okay. Uh, Lenders today can vary widely on the cost, but first let's talk about how much she could borrow. How much could, okay. assume the, the appraisal really did come in at 250000 and 85 year old she's can borrow years old. about $180,000. About, and, yeah. okay, about $180,000. Yeah. We have very sophisticated right. programs that determine this, but I'm saying 180, 185. Right. And, the and, older and, you are, the more money you can borrow. Okay, so uh, 62 is the minimum age, you can borrow about 45, 46% of the value of your home, and it goes up from there. If you're 90 yeah. and above, you can borrow about 75% of the value of your I home. I see. So, okay. so that's another reason why, if you're young, I know, I, I've talked to people who have said, well, maybe I want to get, you know, get a reverse mortgage and just get it in place until, in case I need the money later on. Mm -hmm. And I've told them, I said, you know, that probably isn't wise because if you wait, a, there's some reasonable chance your house is appreciated in value and therefore you're going to get more. Mm -hmm. And B, by virtue of being simply older, you're going to end up being entitled to a greater percentage of the value of your house just because you're old. That is right. true. Just right. by being older, you're entitled to a bigger percentage. So, so, so in this case, she could get about $180,000. About one eighty. It would okay. be her choice on how she would like those funds dispersed. For example? For example, line of credit, which is what seven out of ten homeowners choose. Yeah. It's there, she can pull money out in chunks as frequently or infrequently as she likes in, in amounts as large or small as she likes, okay? The unused line of credit actually grows bigger. So another difference between a HECM and a regular home equity line of credit, say, yeah. is that the unused uh, line of credit grows over time. So if I start off with 120,000, if, if my clients start off with a $120,000 line of credit and didn't use it at all, mm -hmm. right? After five years, she'd actually have the ability to borrow more than that hundred twenty thousand. Correct. I Correct. See. I see. Uh, also, one of these lines of credit can't just be ar arbitrarily stopped or shut mm -hmm. off. Mm -hmm. Another disbursement option is a monthly disbursement from the lender to her, mm -hmm. and there's two kinds. One is called a tenure payment, mm -hmm. and that is a guaranteed monthly payment for life as long as she lives in the home. I see. And the other is a term payment which can be bigger than the tenure payment, but it will end at a finite period of time in the future. Right. Then there's a lump sum. Let's say your client has some credit card bills or the remainder of a car payment or a or, home or, repair. Or, or a mortgage. Or a mortgage. Or a mortgage they have to yep. Yep. And so she needs $30,000 on day one. She can pull some of that out on, on day one to use for that. 
Uh, a rule that's been in effect for about a year now, Arthur, is that she can only use up to 60% of that loan during the first year of the loan. So in this example, there was a $250,000 house. You mm -hmm. were just at ballparking that, that she would have $180,000 available to mm -hmm. her. 60% uh, of that would be about six times know, 18, about ninety thousand dollars, something yeah. like that. Something right? like that. So, yeah. so it may be about ninety to one hundred thousand dollars, or thereabouts, would be available in the first year. Correct. Correct. And it. the rest she can use um, in the, from years two and beyond. I okay. get it. Costs. costs. So there's a few categories of costs. Excuse me. One more thing about yes. these various things. So sure. it, I'm going back to the line of credit yep. example because in general, what I tell my clients is. Don't take the money out, leave it right where it is, mm -hmm. right? Unless you need it. That's the mm -hmm. reason why you're doing it. The, the line of credit that has, the piece that hasn't been used, mm -hmm. there's no interest accruing on that piece, right? The piece that hasn't been used, so there's if, no interest accruing that she'll have to repay. That she'll have to repay. So, Correct. If, so if I've got a $180,000 line of credit mm -hmm. and I'm only using, I only, I've only taken out 30,000 of it, the monthly interest on that that is being added to the 30,000 that I owe, mm -hmm. right, is only on that 30,000. That is absolutely right. There's not right. interest on the rest. Okay. Correct. Just Correct. want that to be real clear. You're right. And your client has the right to prepay any of that in part or at home without any prepayment penalty. So keep that in mind as well. I have, and I've mentioned that to clients, that mm -hmm. you can actually, if you don't want this, the, there is the sense about reverse mortgages that you, like you're buying into this this, 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 you know, you're into this hole, you know, mm. that you've opened up this Pandora's box and the equity is just going to drain away. And mm -hmm. I've told clients, if you have the ability to pay the interest monthly, right, mm -hmm. you can. Yep. In which case, the, the, the amount that is owed stays exactly the same. Correct. But at least this gives you the flexibility. You never have to make the payment. Correct. Right. Correct. Okay. So, in terms of. So, tell uh, me about costs. Sure. In terms of costs, three categories of costs. The first, we've already talked about interest. Yeah. There's fixed interest rates and adjustable interest rates. Mm -hmm. Something I'll mention is that these different disbursement options we were talking about yep. are only available on the adjustable interest rate options. Mm -hmm. The fixed rate, the only option is to take everything in a lump sum on the day of closing. I see. Okay? Um, the second category of costs are what we call monthly servicing fees, mm -hmm. which HUD limits that you, the servicing fee can be up to $35 a month on some loans and up to $30 a month on other loans without getting too yep. deep in the weeds, yep. okay? Yep. That 30 or 35 a month is just added on to what's paid back in the future. Just, just, like, just, the just like the interest, too. So, so, yep. so that, that, that additional increment we just get added monthly. Yep. By the way, does the homeowner in that case get a monthly statement? Yes. So that they all kind of always kind of know how much they owe? Correct. Okay. And the beauty of it is it's not a bill. But it's, it's not just a bill. It's just a monthly a statement. statement. Yep. Third category of costs, which is the one everyone talks about, yep. are closing costs. And here's where Correct. the good news is, right. okay? Not, so, not the good news the way, sure, I, the way my sure. clients always tell me. Sure, right. sure. Now, within closing costs, there's three categories of closing costs. There's the w easiest one is the um, other. It's these third-party fees. Attorney, appraiser, title exam, recording fees, credit check, yep. flood check. All of those for your for your client in a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar home, that might be twenty five hundred bucks in third party fees. Right. And that okay. looks a lot like the fees they'd pay if they were just getting a first mortgage on their house. Correct. All of the, all the things you just listed are all the things that a bank attorney would charge you in order exactly. to get your first mortgage. Exactly. Yeah. If you've bought a house or refinanced a home in the last 10, 15 years, you've seen these fees on a HUD-1 settlement statement. Right. So say that's going to be about yep. twenty five hundred dollars. Yep. What else? Second category of fees are. Um, the FHA mortgage insurance, circling back to us saying it's an FHA insured product. Right. So you pay an initial FHA insurance premium. Mm -hmm. Now HUD has separated all home buyers, homeowners into two categories. There's the, the low insurance premium and the high insurance premium. I see. Okay. If your client only needed a little bit of this money up initially and, mm -hmm. and needed to use less than 60% of this loan on day one of the loan, so mm -hmm. that would be your client, she's got the low premium and that premium would be one half of 1% of the value of her home. So um, so in a $250,000 so house, 1% would be $2,500, yep. so half would be 1250 $1,250 in government insurance. If, well, she, if she's taking less than 60% of yes, the value up. Yes. And I'm going to step back for a second. I mm -hmm. thought in that when we were having that conversation that she couldn't take more than 60% of the mm -hmm. value out in the first year. You, you can't. 
You cannot unless you have what they call mandatory obligations that exceed 60% of the loan. Like paying off the, the like mortgage? Like paying off a mortgage. So I, I get it. So there are certain categories that will yes. push you over 60%. Yes. Because the typical person, from what yep. we're discussing, is going to be that below 60%. Yes. Cut. Yes. So if you're borrowing more than 60%, then yes. what is the FHA yes. cost? Yes. So more than 60% would be she's paying off a $150,000 mortgage or something like that. Right. Then the FHA insurance is 2.5% of the value of the home. Ah, and so that's a much bigger number. 7500 bucks. Well, if right? a two, no, not quite. It would be if there's seventy five hundred of a two hundred fifty thousand dollar house would be two hundred and two thousand five hundred times three. times two and a half. Two and a half. You thought you said it was two and a half. Yep, two and a half percent. So it'd be two thousand about sixty two hundred dollars. Okay. About. Thank you. I'm just playing, right? Thank you. That's all right. That's all right. All right. So sixty two hundred bucks versus twelve fifty. Right. That's a big difference. Big big difference. Okay. Okay. And what's the third cost? 